Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11, verse number 1 says, A false balance is abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. All of these verses are standalone. You can use this, you can use these verses standalone. In this verse, it says a lot. There is a lot of wisdom in it. God does not like false scales. There were people back then that would change the weights and I don't know who the first person to cheat was but it's been going on since. It hasn't changed today and we don't do all of our business quite the same way but God doesn't like a false balance. It's an abomination to him. A just weight is his delight. Make it true. Make it right. I've done jobs. You've done jobs. People have cheated you. People have cheated me. Any aspect of our life we can look at, there has been somebody that has either tried to cheat us or has cheated us, and nobody likes that. God doesn't like it. God, God has a, a, a balance that is just, that is truth. He weighs us. All of our deeds, all of the, the things that we have done, our sins. And when we get to heaven, will it, will it balance out? Here's how, here's how he's going to measure the blood or not the blood. It's just. He looks at us the same. All sins are equal, for all have sinned and come short of the glory. You cannot measure up to the standard that God requires to be in heaven. God doesn't change the rules for anyone. His standard remains the same. His balance is the same. He doesn't like a false balance. He lets us know where he stands. He, gives, he gave us his book. Here's, here's how I feel. Here's what I want. Here's what I expect. We're supposed to read it. We're supposed to look at it. I did, I used to work, work a job and it was, um, I was a contractor, they said, but I worked for a company. Everything was kind of confusing to me, but worked for a company, M&M was the name. We were contractors, so they said. So I was self-employed, but I was, I was hired by them. Every time I did jobs, I made different amounts of money. <laughs> and once I would learn the rules for how much it was points, you do this, you get eight points. You do this, you get 13 points. And you do this, is it, it varies. You could get up to 60 points. Two dollars per point. I can figure that out. I'm either getting $16, I'm getting uh, $26, or I'm getting however much this. It, it, it started to make sense, but they would always change it. And then they would send me to do something that was only two points, which is $4, which I can't drive somewhere and do that job for, for $4. It's not working out for me. But when I would make what I thought would be a good paycheck, the paychecks would vary. I would make a good paycheck. They would deduct for tools that they made me take. We're going to give you this tool. You have to have this tool to do this job. So we're going to deduct from your paycheck $150 per paycheck. And then they would fine me. Somebody would come along behind 
every job, so it seemed. And they would find something wrong with that job and it didn't matter what it was. Didn't matter how, how big or how little the job was. $75 per job, fine. I didn't like that. It w they were cheating me. They kept changing the balance. I, they, and I had no, I have no leverage over that. That's how the world operates. God doesn't like that. So what are we supposed to do? Well, in all, in all of our business, we're supposed to be honest, is what God expects. What if, what if they're not? Well, you're honest, and you have the right to be honest, and you should be. Truth, a just weight. Verse number two, when pride cometh, then cometh shame, but with the lowly, is wisdom. You know what pride is, and God hates pride. We have already covered that in another chapter. Pride is a false balance. Pride is is thinking yourself uh, up up above. You weigh more than you should. You balancing yourself out too much. God doesn't like that. And then shame comes and a fall but with the lowly is wisdom god says measure yourself with humbleness with lowliness people most people don't do that in the world today they lift themselves up self promoters we got to be careful with uh with young people with the next generation because we teach them society teaches them and sometimes parents, we're guilty of that. Sometimes church, everywhere. We teach them it's all about you. Everything's all about you. At Christmas and at, at birthdays and then whenever we, uh, we, just, we give kids and give kids and pump them up, it's, it's all about you. Everybody's a winner. And the real world don't, don't work like that. Everybody's not a winner. Uh, it's we're not we're not fairly or equally treated nothing is equal in the world so don't don't lie to kids don't teach them that don't pump them up with that because when you get into the real world sucker punched oh this is what real life is like and so my whole life I've been lied to thinking it was all about me but nobody seems to care about me well, we shouldn't be guilty of that. Don't teach them it's all about you. Don't hand them everything. Now, um, help your kids, all right? If, you're, uh, if you got a five-year-old and uh, you want to teach them responsibility and, and uh, help them with things, that's great. They're still your kids. They're not employees, right? But don't hand them everything. Some people go to the extreme. The, uh, the opposite the integrity of the upright shall guide them but the perverseness of transgressor transgressors shall destroy them everything in the next several verses are there they're a balance keep picturing verse number one there's a balance there's integrity of the upright there's perverseness of the transgressors one will guide you one will destroy you. Make sure, you're, make sure you're on the right. You're on the truth end of that. Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. Remember Noah? Uh, Genesis chapter 7 tells us that the, the whole world was evil, but Noah was righteous and God spared him. And God spared his family. God closed them in the ark and shut the door as he poured out his wrath upon the earth. Noah built that boat for a hundred years or more, preaching and building, and nobody listened. And everyone was evil, and all hearts and all minds were only evil continually, and it seemed like they would get away with it. 
But Noah was spared because he lived righteous. Not only was he spared, but his family was spared. God spared them because of the righteousness of him. Riches do not profit in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. Verse number six, the righteousness of the upright shall deliver them, but transgressors shall be taken in their own naughtiness. When a wicked man dieth, his, expe his expectation shall perish, and the hope of unjust men perisheth. The righteous is delivered out of trouble, and the wicked cometh in his stead. There's a lot of people that think money can, can buy them out of their problems, and for a while, they get away with it. There are people that are still getting away with it, but they won't always they won't always get away with it. Eventually, it catches everyone. The wicked man dieth and his expe expectation shall perish. A lot of people think that they can leave their kids money. What can I leave with my kids when I die? When we, when we pass away, we want to take care of those that are coming behind us. More importantly than money, teach them just teach them righteous, teach them truth, teach them to handle their own affairs righteously as God would have them to. The righteous will be delivered out of trouble, the wicked cometh in his stead. Verse number nine, and hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor, but through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Once again, we're still on the balance, number, verse number nine. There's the hypocrite, and then there's those that speak knowledge, that speak truth. Verse number 10, when it goeth well with the righteous, the city rejoiceth. When the wicked perish, there is shouting. Now we're getting into a different, a different type of society. By the blessing of the upright, the city is exalted, but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. He that is void of wisdom despiseth his neighbor, but a man of understanding holdeth his peace. A talebearer revealeth secrets, but he that is of faithful spirit concealeth the matter. Verse number, we're going to skip to uh, 21. Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished. But the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. So starting in verse number 10, through those next several verses and in, in counting verse 21, righteousness in the city, righteousness in the state, righteousness in the country versus wickedness in the city. Wickedness in the state, wickedness in the country, wickedness in the world. And though hand join in hand, a lot of times we see, uh, we see agendas, we see evil, we see wickedness, we see things that are against God, and they join hand, and they join arm, and they lock in, and it, it looks like, wow. There's a bunch of them. There's a whole lot of them. They think that makes them right. If we can get others to join with us, if we can get others hand in hand, arm in arm, unity, but God says, no, here's how it is. Though hand join hand, that doesn't matter. The wicked will not be unpunished. The seed of the righteous shall be delivered. We're supposed to live righteous no matter what. Doesn't matter how the city is going. Doesn't matter how this state is going. Doesn't matter how this, what direction this country is going or telling us to go or making us go. No, righteous. Because I'm going back to this balance. God has a balance. God says, the just wait not a false balance. You can, 
you can make up a different perspective and just because people believe that perspective does not make it truth I remember when when I was I told you I think it was Sunday that I could remember things way back and I know when my little brother was born um, I was two I went to some people's house my mom and dad went to the hospital I didn't fully grasp everything that was happening I'll admit I was two I'm here for a good time but when we went to leave we went outside uh, it was it was night all right my brother came little little baby thing uh, they brought him back from the hospital uh, my parents came to pick me up at these people's house we went to leave I walked outside I stepped off of their porch straight into quicksand and I fought it and fought it and the the more that I fought it I don't know how many of you ever been in quicksand one you're not supposed to fight it am I right but the, I was two <laughs> the more I fought the the deeper I went in and I I mean I needed some help and I was I was hollering and kicking and fighting so I remember they my dad picked me up he took me back in uh, got me got me all cleaned up I don't I must have been probably 16 or 17 years old before I figured out what actually happened there was no quicksand but I had seen that on TV and in movies but there I fell in their flower bed and it had um, so we didn't have we weren't we weren't rich when I was a kid so we didn't have mulch in our flower bed but they had it was real soggy they had been watering and the, they had this uh, pine bark mulch in there and it was just swallowing me up I can remember trying to push and trying to get out of it it wasn't quicksand though but I was too and I realized that perspective of a two-year-old is different than perspective of an adult the way I viewed things when I was two is com it wasn't reality it wasn't always truth it was it was real to me but it that didn't mean that it was truth I was fighting something that that didn't actually exist even though it was a big problem to me it wasn't a problem to my dad because he could handle it and God looks at God sees us in the same the same way just like uh, if you saw somebody fall a little kid fall in the mud I mean unless they're wearing their church clothes we can help them you, you don't immediately break down and start crying the world's not ending everything's not over you're not hollering and screaming what do I do what do I do because they fell in the in the the mud but as a little kid it seemed like a big deal and God sees us and we look at things and we see how how things are going I'm stuck in the mire God I'm I've been fighting it uh, one of my one of the things that I say is uh, learn this on doing certain jobs and brother Joey might have felt like that um, last middle of last week but the harder I tried the worse it got and the worse it got the harder I tried I've lived days like that I have fought with things so much and the more that I tried to to fix it the worse the problem got and the worse the problem got the harder I tried to fix it and the cycle the cycle won't end it's never ending but but God says that's not a big deal to me that country your country's not a big deal to me I could fix it in just a second I could fix the state in just a second I could fix your city in just a second though hand join in hand it doesn't matter how many giants doesn't how many light matter how many lions I mean when Daniel was thrown in the lion's den for praying for being righteous God didn't have a limit where he said if there's okay if there's 12 lions down there 
If y'all got, if you got 12 lions, I can help you. But if there's 13, you're on your own. He's no, there's no limit for him. There's nothing that he can't, he can't fix. Though hand join in hand, God says, I don't care. That doesn't bother me. If it's a thousand, if it's 10,000, if it's a million, wicked is wicked, righteous is righteous. Whose side is God on? God's on the righteous side. Our perspective, we see things in a, in a, a childlike perspective. I can't fix this. No one can help me. God can't deliver. But God's balance stays the same. He says, oh, I, can, I can fix anything. I can balance anything out. I can handle all of it. Just bring it to me. And we should, we're supposed to live a life that's like him. We're supposed to live a life where others seek us to help them because I know they're righteous. I know their truth. I know that they can be trusted. I know that they won't cheat me. Nobody wants to go somebody to somebody that lies to them all the time. And we could lie to people. We could tell them things that, and, and people do. Make them feel good. Make them, uh, uh, you're, you're great, you're doing. Some people lie to their, well, in school. In school sometimes, let me use the school I went to, for example. They lied to kids about how they were doing in school. You're doing great. They give them a grade they didn't earn. They, would, they decided sometimes, you know what, that half the class did bad on this, so we're just going to give everybody the same grade. Well, I earned my grade. They earned their grade. I try and teach kids that concept. You, you get what you earn, right? If you got a B, you earned that B. If you got a, a, an F you earned the F. If you get an A, you earned the A. Let's don't give everybody the same thing because that's false. That's, that's a false balance. What are we teaching them? And then these kids that, that come all the way through school with me, they can't read. And then whenever they get turned out in, in society, I'll run into grown men, 30s, 35, 36 years old uh, come up to me and I'm walking by the I don't know what what you call the section at at Walmart Walmart's not my favorite store but they they got tools in certain areas sir could I ask you a question and I'm always I'm a skeptic I'm like oh great I don't want to where's this going do you know how to read a tape measure and I'm like yes Okay, well, I don't really understand what, what's, what's happening with this. And I'm looking at him like, you're a, you're a man? Hey, you don't know how to read a tape, tape measure? Uh, so is this, I'm looking for the, somebody got a camera set up or read his face. Well, he's serious. Happened more than once. Other, peop, other things, same thing. And I'm like, yeah, I know how to read a tape, tape measure. Can you tell me what this line means? Well, that's the half. Okay, what's this one? That's, that's a fourth. Well, how do you know what all these other ones? Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't you count how many there are between each inch? These are inches. Have no idea. How do you get to be 35? You don't, somebody lied to them. Somebody didn't, didn't help them. Now, the reading the tape measure is not the most important thing. And everybody in their life, they may not use, you might not use the tape measure. That's okay. But people have lied to them. They should have taken some kind of measuring in school. They should have learned how to read in school. How do you pass school? How do you get A's and B's in school? And you can't, you can't read when you graduate high school. Somebody lied to them. Now, did that help them when they get out and they try and get a job and they try? No. It's not true. A just weight, a just balance is truth. 
Now, that doesn't mean that we just walk around and say everything that, that pops in or everything that we did just because it's true. We can't follow it up with, hey, it's true. Baby's ugly. It's true. Nobody wants to hear their baby's ugly. You don't, I, what you did last night, maybe everybody don't need to know all the details of that. Uh, some things aren't good conversation at the dinner table while people's eating. Well, it's true. Uh, just because it's true don't mean we could follow it up. But, but truth is a just balance. God wants us to live our life with that. A false balance is abomination to the Lord. All of these verses, they just further, they help us further. Okay, you got, you understand the false balance and the just weight? All right, now add all of these to it, he says. Add this about a righteous man. Add this about a wicked man. Add this about how the wicked die, how the righteous live, how the hypocrite talks, how those with knowledge talk. Talk about, the, talk about your city, talk about your state, talk about your country, talk about the world, but do it with, with righteousness. If somebody's cheating you, you got every right to tell them. doesn't mean that we have, we have to take it. We don't have to take cheating. By the way, uh, sometimes people think that, that uh, we do. We have to take that. We have to be, just take it, be cheated. Well, what, if, if that was the way it was for all of, this country wouldn't, wouldn't exist. But there was a group of people that said, what you're doing isn't, isn't right. It's not balanced. It's not, it's not true. So we're going we're gonna to do our, make our own country, right? They probably don't teach that uh, anymore because they don't want people to know about history. But our country was started out of rebelling against a group that said, we're going to cheat you from your money, and we're going to tell you how to live your life, and we're going to tell you how to, how to worship uh, the God that we tell you, what church you belong to. And they said, no, we're not going to do that. We want truth. The truth will balance it out. So how do, how do you fight against anything? Truth. Use the truth. God does not like a false balance. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for your word. Pray that you would be with us uh, each day of our life, that we live a life that's pleasing to you. I pray that you would just help us to, uh, to be honest, help us to be people of integrity, help us to be people that the world can trust when they need something. In Jesus' name, amen.